the voice. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. This morning, I want to thank God for all of you that is on the line this morning. And I want to thank God for those who have not reached us yet. I hope you had a blessed week. Praise the Lord. I hope you had a blessed week. May God bless you this morning. Some of you are coming from far and wide. Sister Annibal, I remember that Taylor used to climb up in Grenada. Far and wide, Grenada, St. Lucia, Canada, Trinidad, Tobago, New York, and all over the place. So I bless you this morning again in the name of Jesus. And remember our lesson last week, help yourself before you help others. And it sounds again, very selfish, but we had a lot of testimony. If a man cannot help himself, he cannot help others. We have testimony of people who were drowning and other people tried to rescue them and they both almost drowned or drowned. You know, so this is the topic this morning, especially spiritually. You remember the testimony of the lady who went to pray for this guy, this brother and touch him and whatsoever was in that brother came into her. I remember again, I remember Jesus, there were certain men went out and they start teaching and preaching in the name of Jesus. And Satan said to them, I know Jesus, I know Paul, I know Peter, but who are you? And the devil start beating them. So this is why we are saying today, it's better to be sure that you can help others or be sure you can help yourself before you put your hands or your mouth to help others. You may make things worse. So be careful, make sure you are strong. Make sure you have it in you spiritually before you touch someone else. Whether it's their marriage or anything that is that they need help with. Make sure that you can help yourself first before you can touch anything spiritually. As I said, when Jesus came here, he was ready. He was ready to do the will of the Father. He was strong enough to place his hands on others to cast out demons. Oh, hallelujah. So be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. This is why we are studying this lesson. Help yourself before you can trouble others or help others. So this morning, we will continue where we left off. And this lesson is to get us strong. This lesson is to make our names 
written in the Lamb Book of Life. Oh, hallelujah. So we're going to go down to see some advice what the Lord has for us. He is the great advisor. The apostles are our advisors. Don't listen, Brother Gift. I am not experienced enough. Listen the word. Listen the men who have gone on before us. Hear what they say. Take their advice. I am just using their words. I am just reading from their words. So this morning, we're going to continue where we left off. Colossians 2, and we are in verse 6. But we're going to go back to 5 and then come back to 6. A sister gift with, with honorable read for us this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Colossians chapter 2, verse 5. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. We went through this last week. He saw the Apostle Paul is saying, I am not there in my body, but I am there in spirit. So this is a man who could have helped himself and then helped others. He was so powerful by the spirit of the Lord that he could have been in two places at the same time. My wish and your wish should be like the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul could have been here in America and be in your house in St. Lucia and telling you and seeing what you are doing. That is what we have just read there. Let's read it again. Colossians chapter 2 verse 5. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit. Oh, hallelujah. So the spirit man, a man who can help himself and then help others is a powerful spirit man. He is just not a man. He becomes a little god. He is powerful because of the presence of the living God in his body. God is living in him. So the spirit of God can leave here and go somewhere else and tell the Apostle Paul what's going on there. And that's how we, the children of God, have to become. We have to grow. We have to grow in grace. And in this knowledge, this is what he brought with this new covenant. This new covenant bring new power, bring new authority. Hallelujah. Let's read. Joying and beholding your order. So you see what happened? A man, a spiritual man can be in the Middle East and see what's going on in Grenada in your house. He's seeing your order. He's seeing your behavior in your house. Could you imagine the almighty God? Could you imagine Jesus? If Jesus had given us this power, what about him? You can't do nothing and he don't know. You could go to the bottom of hell and do something. You can go to the bottom of the sea. Jesus will know what to do. And he can put in me or you and let me know what is going on with you. Oh, hallelujah. 
And this is where we have to grow in grace and in his knowledge. So this morning, before I go to the next verse, I want to find out where you are. How is your spiritual life? Are you helping yourself? Are you putting in what's supposed to be put in? This is the thing. How much sacrifice are you putting into that soul or that spiritual life? Only then and then you can help others. When you put in to your spiritual life, you have to look every day. Where, where am I? Am I the same man that I was last year? Am I the same lady that I was last month? Am I overcoming my weaknesses? You have to look at yourself. When I was a young man, I used this too. I was full of all different bad diseases, which is sin. And I keep on looking at me. I used to cry out and still crying out today. Because I always said, Brother Gift has to be a perfect man before he left here. I must live into perfection. I would like to see that for me. I said already, I would like to see that for me. I'm not asking for, for it. And the only way you can know if you are growing is when things happen to you. When a man punch you in your face. When a man say bad things about you, then you would know how strong you are. If you are helping yourself, if you are putting in the things that you supposed to be putting in, into your soul. I talk, I said to you, I talk to you, you young people know Michael Jordan and all these great players. They don't joke. They put in hours when the day come into their physical life. 12, 15 hours a day, exercising, playing. How much you read when the day come? How much do you lie down and meditate when the day come? How much do you pray when the day come? How much do you put your your problems, your weaknesses before him and said, I'm going to spend half a day or a couple of hours before Jesus, I'm going to put my problems. Oh, hallelujah. Weaknesses can be moved if we put them before our Savior. You have to spend that time. Don't spend the time looking at somebody else's problem. Spend the time looking at you. How can I help my spiritual life better? How can I help my physical life better? Spend this time. My mother used to always say that. When the new pagan year comes around, she you always said, new year, new rules in my house. What she's doing, she's looking for better Eric. She's looking for better Sylvan. She's looking for better Roll. She's looking for better Ren. So when the new year comes around, my mother always said, hallelujah, I want, I want you to be better. So you, she uses to say, new year, new rules. I'm not going to take on what I take on last year with you, Eric. 
I was the most miserable one in the family. I was the one that giving her the, the most headache. And she would keep on driving that into my brains that I should be better. This is the point I'm making this morning. You have to be a better Christian. You have to be a better man. You have to be a better husband. You have to be a better wife. Stop talking about Sister Jane and look at yourself. This is the message that God has for you. Better man, better woman. Oh, hallelujah. Go in his grace. Go in his knowledge. Go in his truth. Let's see what verse 6 has to offer us. Let's see the advice that verse 6 have. Colossians chapter 2 verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. So he's saying, advice. Advice to me, brother gift. You have received him. What are you doing with him? What is he doing for you? Are you giving yourself to him? So if you give yourself to him, brother gift, you have to walk in him. You have to walk in Jesus. You have to trust this man. This man, Jesus. He says, so walk ye in him. So that means you have to follow him. I always look at him. When he was baptized of John. When he was baptized of John, the Bible said he was led into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus was led into the wilderness without food. The Bible said he was tempted of the devil. So we have to walk the pattern that he walked. He was little God or he was God who sent from heaven. He was the son of God sitting at the right hand of God. And he came down from heaven having no sin in his body. But still he strived. Still he, Jesus fought to win this battle because he was in the flesh. Jesus fought. He went into the wilderness. He starved himself. When last have you take a little fast? You don't have to go whole day. When you get up in the morning, make a couple hours. Hide away for a little while. And say, Jesus, this is all I can give. Four hours. Make that sacrifice. He went 40 days and 40 nights in this flesh. You may not do it. I may not do it. But put in something. Remember, you have your little problems. And Jesus said, this kind cannot go on without praying and fasting. But a gift can't do that for you. Your sister cannot do that for you. When you make a four hours, then you will make a, a six. Then, then you will make a whole day. And then you may make a night and a day. And then you start striving up and up and up. And then you would see 
your problems start solving. Oh, hallelujah. So this is a fight. in a strife to, to enter in. But we have to follow him. We have to, the, the Bible is saying that we have to walk, so walk. We have to so walk with Jesus. It's a, it's a big book, brethren. Take a little a day. Oh, hallelujah. Just a little, a verse. Live with it for the day. Let's see the advice. Verse seven. Colossians chapter two, verse seven. Rooted and built up in him. Look at this. Look at this, brethren, rooted and built up in Jesus. This morning, I was listening to the prayer line, and I said to myself, maybe this is the message for the day, because it's the same thing you were studying. We have this for the past three weeks. Rooted, so you have to have a root. And anything that have root, have good strength. I heard Pastor Morris said this morning, he was making a reference on the prayer line, that somebody bring a flowers into the church. And they didn't wet the flowers, so the flowers died. So he took the flowers and he put the flowers outside of the church and snow came and the flowers looked dead and the snow fall into the, into the pot and he looked at the flowers and he said, no, this ain't look dead. And he, the Holy Spirit said, take the flowers, that's what he said, and take it home. And when he, 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 he couldn't lift the flowers, so he asked one of the brothers or sisters to lift it for him. And he took it home. He took it into his house and he started wetting the flowers. And then he looked and he see a little seed on the dry portion and just popped out. And the next day he looked, he see another little thing just popped out. And he take a piece of stick and he start munching that flower, chucking it around. And he said, today, if you see that flowers, so the, by, so, so the flowers had looked dead, but the root was alive. The roots were still alive. Sister Gift has some side scallions home. And we have them outside. I have never seen something as strong like scallions. And scallions are very soft. You can just take your hand and just boss it. The same thing that we call side home. We call it scallion here. And when winter comes, you won't see the scallion. They dry right down. There'll be nothing like scallion in that pot. And as soon as the spring just come, if you come by my house, you would, you would say this is a miracle. You would say this is a miracle. They just blossom. So the, the leaves die, but the roots went deep into the earth. So the Bible is saying that me and you have to be rooted. Our roots have to go deep into Jesus. That means we have to be feeding in him. And when our roots are built, 
are deep into him, we're going to start building in him. Especially you, you young ones. You're not going to be strong like Brother Gif and others. But take your time. One day at a time. A little fasting. Much praying. Much meditation. It doesn't take a lot to meditate. Throw yourself somewhere. Start talking to him. Oh, hallelujah. Start talking to him in your soul. Jesus, I want to be strong. Lift me up, Jesus. Make me strong. Let me overcome my problem. This is what rooted and building in him means. So the stallion was there looking dead. But the roots was deep into the earth and the root preserved the plant. And then the plant start blossoming again. So when a man is rooted and grounded in the Lord, you can't touch him. You can say what you want. You can do what you want, but you can't touch that man. You cannot touch that woman because you're going to look and see the outside of the man, but you don't know what is going on in the inside of the man. Hallelujah. He is rooted. He is grounded in the Lord. So that is what the Bible is saying. And nobody can do this for you. You have to do this for yourself. This is why the lesson is saying you have to build yourself. If Michael Jordan doesn't want to play basketball, you can't force him to play basketball. You can't force him to put in. And this is what I'm saying this morning. You, you, me, me. It all belongs to me. I'm saying to you and to me, forget Sister Gift for a little while. I do. Locked up in my, in a, I leave the, the marital room and I locked up in a room for seven days. No food, no water, me and Jesus only. And we talk. And you know who is there also? Satan is there. And he will be pushing, brother gift, you hungry. You hungry, brother gift. And then he, he will be putting on pressure on this flesh. And then I would hear my heart say, oh God, you're going to kill me. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. You hear how I'm racing. I want something inside of me but a gift. But here am I. I'm talking to him. I'm talking to my heart. And I say, no, you're not going to die. I'm talking to my heart. And I'm saying, no, you're not going to die. Jesus is going to pull you through. I know you are hungry. But we got to do this. We got to make that seven days. We got to do it without food. We got to do it without water because I want to be more grounded. I want to be more deep in Jesus. Where are you today? Are you putting on that fight? Look at what's going on in our life. So much trials, so much so much pain. Sister Myers said this morning before she come, when she come on the line, Sister Gifford asked her, how is your sister that was in the hospital? She said, she just come home on Thursday. Remember Sister Myers just lose a brother last week or week before. She just bury her brother. And then she said, 
I was coming home from my work on sometime yesterday or the day before and another brother in the hospital. The kind of trouble, the kind of tribulation that me and you are passing through on this earth if we are not grounded. These frustration and trials will throw us off. So we have to be grounded. We have to be built up in Jesus. Let's read a little more. Colossians chapter 2 verse 7. Rooted and built up in him. Look at it. Rooted and built up in him. Give me the next verse. Thank you. And establish in the faith. Establish. Song like establish. A man has to be established in him, fasted, firm, base, secure. Establish. Hear the words again. To be firm. Nobody can move you when you are firm. You are yourself. Nobody can tell you who, who are you. Nobody can throw you off from where you are or what you believe or what you want. whether it be spiritually or physically. They can't throw you off because words just throw off people. You know? I, can imagine, I could remember once I left home and I went to the city and live. And I had my first nice store, really nice store, all kind of clothing you're going to find in it. And then I opened a second store, really nice. And I went back to the village, into the country. And my uncle saw me. He hadn't seen me for the first time, for a long time. I didn't, he didn't say, how, how are you? How are you, Eric? He said, I heard you open up another store. Why are you so greedy? The devil is trying to throw me off. The, the devil is trying to offend me. The devil is trying to stop me. But I was firm. I heard the words, but it didn't go down here. It didn't stop me. He didn't encourage me. So this is what I'm saying today. You have to be established. You have to be firm. You have to have good base. You have to be secured. This is what firm means to establish yourself. How are you doing? Words matter to you? Who speak into your life? Who you listen to? All these negative things come. And I was in my youth, maybe 21, 23, looking for a place in this life. And your own uncle, brother, sister would try to throw you off, both spiritually and physically. So you have to be firm. You have to be established. You have to know what you're about. And nobody can give you this. You have to develop this in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. So read that again for me, Sister Gaith. And establish. Go ahead. Colossians chapter 2. Verse 7, 
rooted and built up in him. Nice. And established in the faith. Established in the faith. Why do you think so much people leave? Because they were not established. They were not grounded in the faith. That's one of the first thing you have to do in this life. When you are in this business, you have to be established in this. This is a big business. This is your life. I have got everything that I've got today because of this faith. Oh, hallelujah. This is not who I was. If you had seen me when I was who I was, I did not work one penny. But because I am built up and established in the faith, Jesus gave me everything that I have. A great family. How do you think I'm in this country? You think I was sponsored by one of my brothers or sisters? The church and the people who are in the church. Daddy one do sign paper and said, brother, if I'll take care of him and his family. That is why Jesus is saying, you have to be established in the church. This is your home. The church, the faith, you have to make it your home. And that is what I and my family have done. We make the church our home. Oh, hallelujah. So when you make it your home, Jesus is watching. And he would give you everything that you need, Jesus would give you everything you need. The shirt on my back, the glasses on my face, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I can remember we came from work one night we live in Queens, New York. And as we were coming home, my wife and my son, we were a little hungry. So I called my sister and said, what, what do you have there? She said, pass. She said, come. And we went by our house. And I park up in front of a house because there was no park. So myself, Sister Giff was a driver. Myself, Sister Giff and my son run into the house to pick up the food that she had. And my sister convinced us to sit down and eat. And I said, I park up, I'm double park. And as I looked outside, after a little while, there was a park. And I went out to move the car to put into the park. When I went out and I sit down in the car, I noticed the car glass. I can't see, see out of it, the windscreen. I can't see out of the windscreen. The windscreen starts crumbling. You know, when, when a windscreen breaks, it doesn't break out, it just crumbles. And I sit there watching the windscreen crumbling. And it, it seemed like I went into a daze. Like I didn't know what was going on. And the windscreen crumbled until I couldn't see. And when I looked, like I came out from the days, and I looked, I see a hole 
in the windscreen. And then I looked on the steering wheel. I see a hole came through the steering wheel. Then I realized it's a gun bullet. When I, I jump out from the car, I see on the, the, the headrest like this. A hole went through the headrest. Thank God my sister had called us inside. That bullet would have maybe go straight to my wife or sister gave nose or eye somewhere. That is why I'm saying how oh, God is good. When a man is rooted, building, establishing him in the faith, God going to save him from a lot of stuff. She would have been, she would have died immediately. Think about the headdress. The headdress is somewhere here. So that bullet would have gone straight to her nose, her mouth, somewhere here. And I could never forget that. I am saying to establish yourself in the faith and you will get everything that you need, needs are. Ah. He told Peter and him nothing. He said, if a man give up everything in this life, you end up with houses, you didn't say housing, houses. Everything that you want going to come when you serve Jesus in spirit and in truth. When you look at yourself and build yourself up, now I can help others. So you have to be rooted, builded, Establish in the faith. Read. As ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Oh, hallelujah. So this is what we're doing today, especially for the young ones. We are teaching you how to do this. This is not a true religion, you know. This is a true church. This Jesus is true. Most of us come here with nothing. Just the clothes on our back. We leave countries, our countries, and come here with the clothes on our back. And because we stayed in the faith and we have learned, we have a bond, we get bigger and greater every day in him. We grow in him, abound. We grow in him. We establish in him. I need you to do better than me. I need you to do better than, than us that came. I doesn't care where you are. I need you to do good in Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. He can provide the needs, the strength, the education. But you have to start looking at you. What do I need to get there spiritually? What do I have to drop off to get there spiritually? What do I have to sacrifice to get there spiritually? Now today, he's saying, brother, give, give thanks. Give thanks, brother, give, give thanks. Read the whole verse again for me, sister, give. Colossians chapter 2, verse 7. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, mm -hmm. as ye have been taught, abounding daring with thanksgiving. You see, no, Brother Gift can sit down and give thanks. Many of you on the line, 
can give thanks now. Don't forget where you come from. And this race is not finished until it's finished. This race is not finished until it's finished. So you give thanks now and you start helping others. Oh, hallelujah. You start helping others to grow in the faith. Praise the Lord. Let's jump. At, don't lose this verse. I'm coming back to there. But let's just jump to Romans 12 and verse 1. Let's see what advice Paul has for us in Romans 12 and verse 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Look at that. I'm beseeching you. I'm calling you. I want you to listen to me. I have advice for you. That's what Paul is saying. Beseech. Hear me out. I want to talk to you. I want you to listen to me. So I beseech you, brethren, read it. By the mercies of God. And he's putting in, God bring mercies. It's not Paul's mercies, it's God's mercies. By his mercy, by the mercies of God. Listen what he's saying. That ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Oh my God, what an advice. What an advice. This is the best advice that I had when I came into the faith. By his mercy, present your body a living sacrifice. But let's deal with mercy. It's a merited favor. So if you try to present your body a living sacrifice and you feel one time, or you feel twice. This is where the mercy come in. This is where the good grace come in. This is where he have mercy or compassion upon you when you fail. I know in some churches when you fail, that's it. But that's not how Jesus teaches. Even Jesus, when he was carrying that cross, you remember that? After they provoke him whole night, whole day, whole night, he didn't sleep. He was tired. He was flesh and blood. And they give him that heavy piece of wood to carry. The man fall down, fall down, fall down until he couldn't make it. And a man from Africa came, took up the cross and carried for Jesus. So that is why he's saying here, by his mercy, by his grace, you're gonna fall, you're gonna make mistakes. A lot, of, a lot of preachers doesn't tell you that, but I guess he's telling you that this morning. You're gonna make mistakes. I made some terrible ones, but it make me stronger. It makes me better. It gives me a testimony. Mistakes give people a testimony. That you can talk about it. This happened to me because I did this. I made a mistake and do this. And I fell. I stumbled. So he's saying to me, and he's saying to you, especially you young ones, by his mercy, by the mercy of God, present your body a living sacrifice. What is he saying? What is he saying to me? What is he saying to you? That this body has to be pure, has to be holy. This is where he, this is what he lives in, you know. 
he ain't live in that tabernacle that he had built 40 and that they had built 40 and six years, you know. He used to live in that. Jesus. Jesus used to live in that tabernacle. But he now lives in this one. So he's saying, if we want him, Jesus, to live in this tabernacle or body, we have to present him a living sacrifice. And he said, the body have to be holy. Not like the sheep and goats that they used to carry into that tabernacle and kill it. Our sacrifice are different now. I'm coming back to it. Praying, fasting, giving away some of the clothes you have on, giving away the extra things that you don't use. Make sure you drop the children when you're going down with your car instead of going down empty. Open up the door, those of you who are in the islands. Give them a ride. One time, one time I went into a hotel, myself and sister gave. <clears throat> and a young man woke up and he said, Miss, you remember me? And my wife said, no. Who are you? She said, you can't remember me? I am little Jerry, used to be in your class. And he said, you were one of the nicest teachers. Look who I am now, I'm a chef. So you have to do good. I never forget that happened years ago. And I'm seeing the young man when he woke up and he was so proud of himself and so proud to see his, his ex-teacher. And he present himself to, to, to his ex-teacher and tell him, tell her, who is he? So this is why I'm saying to you, the good that you have to do with this body. But first you have to present it wholly to him. For all these things, the miracles to happen in your life and my life, this body first. This body first. This body first. You have to look after your body. You have to look after your weaknesses. Young people, old people. You have to see about yourself. What's going on in here? What's my weaknesses? Do I find time to pray? Do I find time to sort God? You have to look at your med you have to look at your measuring stick. So much time you are giving to your children. And they don't even need your time. But you give them all the time and less time for Jesus. So he is saying to me and to you that to present our body a living sacrifice, it don't want dead sacrifice. It has to be holy, the body. That's all he wants, you know. And this body must be acceptable for he to live in it, for Jesus to live in this body, this body has to be acceptable to him. So the Holy Spirit going to come and pay a visit and look at Brother Gift's body, look at your body and see if he, the Holy Spirit can live in it. He is sent from Jesus. And he's going to test the body. He's going to see what is inside there. He's going to see if you are helping yourself. When he visits. And he's going to say to you, Brother Joel, do you need help? 
Brother Mitchell, do you need help? Sister Shariah, do you need help? If you need help, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to make you sacrifice this body. It's going to be pain. It's this body holds on to things. It's going to pain you when you start doing the surgery. When the Holy Spirit start doing the surgery in you and me, you're going to say, do I really have to drop this? Things that you hold on to, precious. You know something? I just remember this. Easy care. Easy care. I saw God use Ezekiel up and down Israel and in Babylon. But God couldn't get enough of Ezekiel. Ezekiel had a loving wife. And he couldn't get enough because he knew Ezekiel loved his wife. But and Ezekiel was giving God the time, you know. But God is a jealous God. And God called Ezekiel one day. And he said to Ezekiel, I'm going to do something to you, Ezekiel. And I don't want you to mourn. I don't want to see one tears come from your eyes. I'm going to take your wife. I'm a jealous God. I have work for you to do, Ezekiel. I can't share you with your wife. And God, at least God didn't, he could have given him a little time to cry, a little time to mourn. But God told Ezekiel, I don't want to see a tear come from your eyes. I'm going to take your wife. Oh, hallelujah. And God took Ezekiel wife. And God used Ezekiel up to today. Ezekiel prophesying things that are happening today. Hallelujah. These are the painful sacrifice sometimes we have to make in this life. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> to be a real man and woman of God, there are sacrifices that we all have to put in. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 oh hallelujah, oh hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So brethren. So it has to be holy. It has to be acceptable. And God call it a reasonable service. This is what he says here. He call it just, he call what Ezekiel done a reasonable service. <laughs> Big price to pay. Read that verse again to me, Sister Give. Romans chapter 1, chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God 
which is your reasonable service? <sighs> reasonable service. God does not give a man more than what he can bear. You know, for what he have in store for us, the kingdom, this is a reasonable service. Eternal life. God have eternal life secure for us. No more pain. No more pain. No more trials. No more tribulation. He called it a reasonable service. Look at verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. He said, but again, if you want to serve me, you can't fashion yourself like this way. You have to be different. Confirm means to fashion. Be like. You want to be like your brother. You want to be like your sister. But your calling is different. God wants to make you a prophet. God wants to make you a prophetess. He could deny you from certain things. So as your brother and sister may have a wife, a husband, children, he's saying to Brother Giff, be not confirmed to this world. He's saying to you, Sister Thomas, I don't like to, the way you dress. He's saying you're, conf- you're dressing like the world. I need more modesty in you, Sister Thomas. That, that is what he's saying. I need you to be a better example, Sister Thomas. I need you to get them proper clothing. You may come in a dream or vision and you get up in the morning and you're walking around the house and you say, like Sarah, laugh. Where I got getting money from? And suddenly money just came. Remember you asked, where would I get the money from? Remember those money is to go buy some mother's dresses. He said they're too tight. I want you to be different, Sister Thomas. Sister Sherry Ann, I need them to be different. So I don't want the conformity. These are the sacrifice that we have to make. Nobody can do this for you. You have to help yourself. But in this, there are greater goods. Obedience. I like Abraham. When God called him and said, leave your father's house, he had everything there. And he just packed up. Pack up everything. Don't know where he was going. But he heard the voice. He got the vision. And God called him out of his father's house. And said, listen, I want you to go. Leave that house. It is idolatrous. And Abraham took his wife and his donkey and a few animals and start going on his journey. And when God saw that, you know what he said? 
Abraham, you are not righteous enough. But look, I'm going to count your faith. I'm going to count your faith. I'm going to count what you do for righteousness. So God is looking what you're doing. God is looking at what I'm doing. Abraham catch his royal to get a son. When the angel went to Sarah and told Sarah that she will get a son, <laughs> and Sarah just walked off and laughed. Because it, to her, it was impossible. But she got that son. And one day God came to Abraham and said, I need a sacrifice. Take your son and sacrifice him. I have never seen a man like this. I have one son. So I could tell you, and it's always, there's not a day in the week I just tell Sister Gates, we should have get more children. Maybe she bored with that saying no. And here is Abraham. Call that son. Sharpen his knife. Went up in that hill. And intend to kill that son. Obedience, sacrifice. God said to me and you, He need living sacrifice for me and you. Are you able? Are you willing? Do you want to give that sacrifice to Him? Are you willing? So he's saying here, yeah, be not confirmed. The things that I have given you do not confirm to them. Because one of these days, I'm going to tell you to get rid of them. Your own children. Oh, hallelujah. This is what God want to see me and you, the faith, the trust. And Abraham walked up that hill and the son asked him, where is the lamb? I wonder what was going on in him. Not a tear running down because the boy would have asked, dad, you're crying. He said, where is the lamb, dad? And Abraham said, God is going to provide the lamb. He didn't see the lamb. He saw the lamb in his hand. He said, God going to provide the lamb. When God saw the type of faith that this man exercised, he said, Abraham, I count this faith for righteousness. His faith make him a righteous man. Not his walking, not his talking, not his preaching, not how much he gives, but how much he trusts God. Let's get the last verse. Read this again. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transform. You have to change. That's what God is saying. Give, you have to change. 
if you want to serve me in spirit and in truth, if you want to reach great heights, you have to change. It's like a car that you have nowadays with transmission. It, this is called transform. Your car is called transmission. It doesn't stay in one gear all the time. It's not going to go nowhere. So the car moves from one to two to three to four. So he's saying to me and you, listen, you have to expect change if you want to serve me. You have to give me what I want if you want to serve me. And you give to me, I'll give back to you. Give. Sister sherry -Ann, Sister Clark, Sister Walker, how much do you have to lose? How much do you intend to lose to God? How much do you want to give to him when he asks? You want to be a real man of God? You have to lose. You have to present your body as a living sacrifice. And it must be acceptable. It must be. God call it, a, no matter what you give to God, God call it a reasonable service. It must be transformed, my life, your life. Oh, hallelujah. It must be from a, a renewal of mine. So today, our mind is so, tomorrow it must be different. That when God comes and he acts, like how we asked Abraham, we said, yeah, Lord. Like Job, the Lord liveth, the Lord taketh. Remember, he took all his children, all his animals. How much you have to give? A renewal of mine. Read this again. That ye may prove what is that good. <laughs> prove. Prove what is that good. Read. And acceptable and perfect will of God. All is God's will. It must be acceptable. It must be Perfect. When Sarah laughed, it was not nice. She was rebuked. But Abraham always believed. We're going to stay here. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not going to go further. I know you are there with me. I know you understand what I said. I know you're going to present your body an acceptable service. Thank you. In Jesus' name.